Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In this video, we're going to look at hyperbolic partial differential equations, or PDEs for short. We're first going to introduce the linear advection equation, which is an example of a hyperbolic PDE. And we're then going to look at characteristics, which are a way that we can track the information flow in a hyperbolic PDE system. Characteristics will turn out to be very useful when we come to design numerical methods for PDEs, which we'll look at in subsequent videos. In the previous video, we introduced the wave equation UTT minus UXX equals zero as the prototypical hyperbolic PDE. And we can note that the wave equation can actually be written as a system of first order PDEs for two functions u and v, where we have that ut plus vx is equal to zero, and vt plus ux is equal to zero. Now, if we look at utt, we can use our first equation to write this as d by dt of minus vx, and assuming that our solutions are smooth enough, we can write this as minus d by dx of vt, and using our second equation, we can convert this into uxx. And therefore, we see that our first order system is equivalent to the wave equation. Since we're able to make this simplification, it motivates us to look at a simpler equation to begin with of the linear advection equation, where we have that ut plus cux is equal to zero. And here we could make use of an initial condition that u of x and 0 is equal to u subscript 0 of x, and c here is a real constant. And this equation is representative of hyperbolic PDEs in general. And it's a first order PDE, and therefore it doesn't fit into our standard conic section naming scheme. However, it is time dependent, it's also conservative, and it's not evolving toward a steady state, and therefore it fits within our typical characteristics of a hyperbolic equation. We're going to develop numerical methods to analyze and study this equation, and once we've done so, we'll actually return to the wave equation later on. For the linear advection equation, we can actually write down the exact solution as u of x and t is equal to u0 of x minus ct. And this will satisfy both the PDE and our initial condition. And to check this, let's write that z of x and t is equal to x minus ct. And therefore, our exact solution is u0 of z of x and t. And now let's substitute this in to our PDE and make use of the chain rule. So our PDE will evaluate to u0 prime of z times dz by dt plus c u0 prime of z times dz by dx, and that will evaluate to minus c u0 prime of z plus c u0 prime of z, and that will then evaluate to zero, and so therefore our PDE is satisfied. This tells us that our solution transports or advects our initial condition with speed c. And it's worth noting that in this area of the literature, c is often referred to as a speed, even though it's technically a signed quantity, and therefore more accurately, a velocity. And as an example, let's look at the case when c equal 1 and our initial condition is a Gaussian centered on x equal 1. If we look in the plot, at our solution at t equal 2, 4, and 6, then we see that the Gaussian progressively moves to the right. We can understand the behavior of hyperbolic PDEs in more detail by considering characteristics. And for the linear advection equation, characteristics are paths in the xt plane, denoted by a capital X of t and t, on which our solution is constant. So if we look at our equation ut plus cux equals 0, then our characteristics will be capital X of t is equal to x0 plus ct. And here, each value of x0 will give us a different characteristic. So now let's look at our solution along a characteristic. So if we calculate 
d by dt of u of x of t and t, then we'll get partial d by dt of u of x of t and t, plus partial d by dx of u of x of t and t, times dx by dt. And dx by dt will equal c. So therefore this will become partial d by dt of u of x of t and t, plus c times partial d by dx of u of x of t and t. And since our equation is ut plus cux equals zero, we know that this expression will evaluate to zero, and therefore we see that our solution is constant along each characteristic. So if we look at position u of x of t and t, then that will be equal to u of x of zero and zero, and that will be equal to our initial condition u zero at x zero. And we therefore see that our initial condition is transported along the characteristic. Characteristics therefore have important implications for the flow of information and also for where we can apply boundary conditions. And to illustrate this, let's look at solving the linear advection equation over the range from x equal a to x equal b using c greater than zero. And we have an initial condition at t equals zero. And for each characteristic, we can only impose one condition on it because otherwise our PDE solution will be overdetermined. So if we look at the characteristics that pass through x equal a, we see that they don't intersect our initial condition and therefore we can impose a boundary condition there. However, if we look at the characteristics that intersect x equal b, we see that they also intersect either the initial condition or the line x equal a, and therefore we can't impose an additional boundary condition there. If we switch the sign of c, so c is less than zero, then we see that the behavior at x equal a and x equal b is flipped. We can now impose a boundary condition x equal b, but we can't impose one at a. More generally, if we have a non-zero right-hand side in the PDE, then the situation is a bit more complicated along characteristics. And let's now consider the equation ut plus cux is equal to f, where f can depend on t, x, and u of t and x. And let's now look at a characteristic x of t is equal to x0 plus ct. If we look at how our solution depends along our characteristic, so we evaluate d by dt of u of x of t and t, then we see that that will work out to be f of t and x of t and u of x of t and t. And in this case, the solution is no longer constant along characteristics. However, we have reduced our PDE to a family of ODEs. And if we want to know the solution at a particular position, x of t and t, then that will be equal to our initial data, u0 evaluated at x0, plus the integral from 0 to t of f of t and x of t and u of x of t and t, dt. Hence, to evaluate the solution at a particular point, we just need to find the characteristic that passes through that point, follow that characteristic back to the initial data, and then integrate an ODE along that characteristic. We can also find characteristics for variable coefficient advection. And a small exercise that you can do is to verify that for the equation ut plus c of t and x ux equals zero, then the characteristics will be given by d by dt of x of t is equal to c of x of t and t. And in this case, we have to solve an ODE to obtain the characteristic curves x of t and t. As an example, let's look at the case when c of t and x is equal to x minus a half. And in this case, we can find that our characteristics will be x of t is equal to a half plus x0 minus a half, all times e to the t. And in this case, we get characteristics that are exponentials that bend away from the line x equal to a half. 
And if we had some initial data, u0 at time 0, then it would be propagated along these characteristics and would therefore expand as time passes. Characteristics can also apply to nonlinear hyperbolic PDEs, for example, Berger's equation, but this is outside the scope of AM205. In the next video, we'll see that characteristics have important implications for designing numerical schemes for the linear advection equation and more generally, hyperbolic PDEs.